how's everything been coming along? Hey, uh, pretty good in general. Um, slightly, uh, there's been a slightly discouraging event recently, but um, I'm staying optimistic. Um, I, I gave you like a, a, a brief overview in, in an email a few weeks ago, but um, I'm glad we could talk about it one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And I had a few other uh, questions I wanted to ask. Yeah, sure. Whatever is most pressing for you, whatever I could best support you on. Okay, good. Um, I guess I can just preface what happened uh, on my LSAT. So um, I've been prepping for around like six to eight months now, pretty seriously. Um, and of course, the, the, the flex is a great benefit because, you know, you don't have the, the stamina for that uh, for that extra experimental section. Um, so I was like, okay, I really want to target the uh, the June uh, 2021 LSAT. It, it'll be perfect. Um, it's right before, uh, you know, the the, uh, the waitlist cycle, which I was on UJ's waitlist. It's my target school. I was like, okay, if I can really nail this, um, they'll accept me. And I'm a splitter. I had been scoring in their 75th percentile. I was pretty confident going in. And I uh, actually had a technical issue with my uh, first test where my proctor uh, accidentally called me and caused me to miss like four or five questions due to questions due to like pop up blocks, pop up boxes that were appearing on my screen. Um, and that was tremendously discouraging because I wasn't sure if I'd had to wait another three or four months before the, the August one. And um, turns out I could retake it the following week. So the following week comes around, um, and I was just incredibly anxious. I mean, that, that would be an understatement. I, I didn't sleep the night before. Um, uh, I was sort of expecting something to go wrong with this one. Um, and that, that really uh, got me on edge. And then to add on top of that, the first section was reading comprehension which absolutely blew me out of the water. And I was like, oh no, this is, this is not good. I, I, I didn't you know, warm up uh, with anything regarding reading comprehension because reading comprehension has just always been less. So I was sort of anticipating that, um, you know, once, once you get through logic games and logical reasoning, your mind's uh, sort of in a zone where reading comprehension just comes naturally. Um, so I was I was anticipating that flow to come, and I was reading sentences twice, and I, I think this reading comprehension was exceptionally uh, difficult, which added on to my anxiety. And I got my score back, and I don't I only improved two points, which didn't reflect my past four to five uh, um, practice tests, and it certainly didn't reflect my preparation over the past six to eight months. Um, so I'm obviously planning on retaking it. Um, but I guess the first question I wanted, given that, the first question I wanted to ask was like, how should I change? Well, you said I shouldn't change my approach in any significant way, granted that I've been studying uh, continuously for the past six to eight months. Um, however, I've gone through a lot of material already, and I think I've probably seen 80% of the questions. Um, do you think there's any drawbacks to going through, like th taking practice tests when I may already know the answers to them? Um, and then I guess second, um, how should I gauge the study time that I have um, relative to the next practice test, uh, or not, pra not practice test, actual LSAT test that I would take? I'm, I'm worried about burnout slash material that I have left. Sure, sure. Well, thank you for the detailed background on the situation. First off, I'm sorry to hear about what happened with your online LSAT administrations. I mean, certainly the majority of cases tend to go relatively smoothly. I'm sorry that yours didn't happen with the initial, the pop-up boxes and such. Obviously, proctors are not perfect. And I'm sorry that it affected your second administration as well. Know that while tech issues can happen, they're not 
guaranteed to happen. You're also not guaranteed to have reading comp last like you do in Law Hub. So that's a lesson learned going forward is that although Law Hub has games first, logical reasoning second and third, third reading comp fourth, of course, on exam day, the sections can appear in any order. And unlike the older LSATs with two LRs, your experimental section now going forward could be any of the three types. So what I would want you to change going forward is to mix it up, to mix up section order, to mix up which one is going to be your unscored, unknown experimental section during all of your practice tests. And I would focus on test day prep specifically for the new four section LSAT format. I would aim to do a number of exams, ideally at least five to 10 between now and test day and mix up the section order, mix up the placement of everything. Regarding your concern around having burned through too much material, I'm never really concerned about this because taking exams is not simply to measure yourself. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to give yourself time sittings under realistic test day experience to circumstances to work on your pacing, to work on your endurance, and also to simulate test day, which includes, as I've said, mixing it up. Burnout, though, is a real concern. And so I want you to make sure you to make sure you're taking plenty of breaks and doing whatever you can to bring down the, the stress level or bring down the anxiety level. Yeah, I, I saw an article that you posted. Um, I'm not sure how long ago it was, but uh, it was a relationship between meditating and GRE scores. I thought that was fascinating. That's something I'll, I'll probably take up. Is there any service that you recommend doing that? Any of the apps you're fine. It's about whatever you really seem to connect with in terms of style, in terms of tone, format, and that you would stick with. So there's a number of apps for this. There's Headspace, there's Calm, there's Waking Up. There's also a number of guided meditations on YouTube. If you're looking for any format, really, you can find it there. You could also find things related to guided visualizations. And related to the meditation GRE connection, I think it really just comes down to focus and taking control of your mental state, your emotional state, when you're placed in a stressful situation, being able to bring it back down to baseline and focus on the task at hand. Because obviously your practice has, you know, it's not the real thing. So you're much closer to baseline, typically, at least relative to the actual test day when you know this is when it counts. And so if you can train yourself to reduce the adrenaline or to channel it in a more productive direction, meditation and mindfulness can help with that. Um, and do you think, um, I, I'm just looking through some notes here. Um, do you think a November LSAT date is uh, a good date to target for it? Do you think I should maybe prolong my study time uh, longer just to you know, maybe enhance the, uh, the score that I want? Or do you think the LSAT date right before you know, the, the earliest admission cycle is a good date to shoot for. I mean, granted that I've already been studying uh, for the LSAT. I've honed most of the, I mean, all, not most, pretty much 95% of the fundamentals. Um, like, from here, how, how do you think I should, should target that date? Great question. Applying early matters a lot less than it used to. The cycle has extended longer and longer. So I wouldn't want you to feel like you need to rush it for August or even for October, if you feel you would benefit from having more time and taking it in November, that's totally fine. November is actually now fairly early in the cycle relative to how it used to be perceived. So if you're digging okay. through old articles from me or others, those references to specific months might be outdated, especially as we've seen in this previous cycle, things are late. Things are late in my experience compared to how they used to be and law schools waitlist more applicants than ever before to see who else will come along. So if you feel like November would allow you to achieve your fullest potential, then go for that. I don't think you need to push beyond November. And you can see how your practice test scores come along. I mean, we're speaking now mid-July, roughly. Between now and October, that might be enough. You'll see what happens and see how your scores progress as you get closer to any of those dates. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that, that takes a lot of, off my mind then. So I was thinking, you know, I, I want to study uh, to master essentially the tasks right before I would 
uh, and I ideally score the highest I, I could possibly score right before the, the early admission cycle, that's my score. Um, also, I guess regarding like generic study planning, um, I feel like my approach was, was pretty sound. I followed your, uh, I think six month study guide, but crunched into like four to five months. Um, how, what do you think my, my studying regimen should be like? from here on out, you know, should I start back from the fundamentals or should I be focusing more around time tests or what in your experience have you seen uh, has not worked or has worked tremendously for people? It depends on where you specifically are. So when you ask about fundamentals, do you feel that you need the fundamentals? Do you need a refresher on all of it? Or maybe you need to just drill on some weak areas? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there are some weak areas. Um, and I go through the Socratic method on questions I miss, um, which also like reinforces all the areas. Um, yeah. I, I think there are like a few areas that I could hit the fundamentals and just target by a group type. One second, let me grab my charger. So, so do you recommend, uh, so like in your study plan, uh, it says, you know, focus on one particular section per week, something like that. Um, is that, do you think that's strict or could I like augment that by you know, throwing in two or three days with like focus on reading comprehension, which I think is my, my weakness, ironically, because I, I'm continuously reading. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to fix my charger. Yeah, I'd say reading comprehension is is probably my weakest. And like I said, I, I read a ton. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because I, I do it at the end of my practice test that I, I score slightly lower than all the other sections. Um, and independently, if I'm if I'm fresh, I, I do very well. Um, how should I go about, you know, leveraging that weak area? Um, it's comparatively to doing time sections in other areas or focusing on other other areas. Would I intersperse that um, throughout the week, augmenting that schedule, or should I devote, you know, uh, a longer continuous study time to that section? I would give it a higher ratio of your prep time if you feel it needs more time. And any of the weeks in the schedule, they may have a particular focus on one section or another but I'm always having you mix in other sections as well to stay fresh on them. So even if you're giving logical reasoning a focus, you can still mix in some reading comp on some of the lighter days or on an okay. off day, or, and you can always change it up. And you'll also discover if reading comp is truly a weak area, or if just you're tired by that point in the full length exam, as you're indicating. So maybe it's that you just need to work on your endurance in general, regardless of whatever is last. Okay. Um, okay, that helps. The, the only thing is, I don't, I don't know if it's like I, I haven't really significantly improved my reading comp. Like I'm averaging like twenty one, twenty two, and like like eighteen, probably eighteen to twenty on like the more difficult passages. But I literally cannot break that. Despite you know, I'm always reading articles. I'm summarizing in my head uh, what's occurring. Um, and I don't really know how to make that breakthrough to where, you know, I'm missing like one or two per passage, which I guess I'd get up to like 24 or 25. Um, what's a way that like I can actually make that, that breakthrough? Like, what does that require? Have you watched the deep dive videos in the course? Uh, yes, I have watched, uh, I feel like, yeah. Uh, quite a few of them. Um, one of them was with um, Alicia, I think. Um, and she was going over like, okay, actually summarize the passage in terms of the, the functionality of them. And that, and I saw a, a score improvement doing that, but over time that just flatlined. Um, and I'm not sure if there's something else that I need to be doing, or I need to be doing the functionality as well as summarizing the, the, the paragraphs in uh, shorter sentences, or if I'm just doing something 
completely wrong. I'm reading too slow, maybe, and I don't have enough time to really process the, the answers correctly, which I think is a possibility. But I feel like I, I do read quickly, but maybe I'm, I'm not skimming, as I've seen some people uh, say. And I've, I've tried that before, and I've done well, but other times I've done just horrendously trying to do that. Um, is, is skimming the next level? Is that what I need to master? Well, there's a number of things it could be, and people mean different things by skimming. I try to stay away from using that term specifically. What I talk about is, on the one hand, reading for functionality, aka reading for structure. You want to make sure that you have a structural emphasis on your analysis of the passage, meaning you're not reading for information, but rather you're reading to see what role does this statement play in the passage as a whole especially in terms of the arguments or the positions, theories, hypotheses that the author is laying out. Make sure you have that down. You want to know the viewpoints, which are the theories, hypotheses, opinions, and then the evidence. You want to know where it appears and what role it serves to support a particular viewpoint. And you also want to know who, if anyone, is advocating a particular viewpoint. And this process has a lot in common with role of statement in logical reasoning. And so you'll see in some of the reading comp videos, you'll see outlines of the simple structure of the passage or perhaps a more complex structure contained within that passage. And so that focus can help you get more out of your read of the passage and also potentially help you get through it more quickly because you're not getting so mired in the topic or in the details of the evidence they're using. Okay, yeah, and I, that's actually a weakness in uh, my logical reasoning is a role of statement. Um, so that it might actually be like the, the, the foundation of where I'm going wrong, which is interesting. Um, One other comment I have is around the amount of time you might be spending on the initial read. It could just be that you need to get through your initial read a bit faster by focusing on the author's opinion and any viewpoints, and then noting where the details are, where the evidence is, but come back to it later when you actually need it for a particular question. Okay. And I did, I, I mean, sadly, I, I began to notice that towards the end uh, of my prep leading up to this test, um, as I was like, okay, I'm, I'm focusing way too much on just inconsequential details. And I, I, I need to be reading quick and then referencing essentially where those details are, which I was just, trying to get through the details themselves uh, and sort of have a mental picture of them, which uh, does not work with speed. So, so when, I, when I look towards your next three to four months of prep, mm -hmm. you're asking about reading comp a lot. You're talking about it. It may just be that it's an endurance issue and that reading comp was last in it. It's not reading comp in particular because you're saying that you get it in isolation, but it does still sound like there are some big things you could do to change your reading comp approach, that would help you. So I'd encourage you to continue working through the deep dive videos in the course, those full length reading comp passage walkthroughs. You can also look at the reading comp express class sessions where we're getting through it a bit more quickly and covering every question associated with the passage. Okay, cool. Along with the full length exams. And you'll also discover if there are certain logic games areas or logical reasoning, you mentioned role of statement that you may wanna drill on the side as well. Okay. And also I had um, a few specific questions regarding uh, logical reasoning. What I just, could I ask the, I, I know that there are like study groups that meet. Um, I, I work uh, like eight to five every, so when I get back, like usually uh, the amount of time that I, ha I have to spend studying is very limited. So I don't, necessarily have time to like hop in in all those sessions you know like i want to optimize as best i can the amount of time that i can focus on studying but are there are devoted study groups to that that i could ask these questions to right or yeah there are there are to submit them okay yeah so every thursday night there's logical reasoning study groups oh, really? and okay. logical reasoning class as well and so depend you can bring those into logical reasoning class to ask the instructor, you can also bring them up in the study group and have a more in-depth conversation with other students about those. And okay. 
the agenda is you. So you bring whatever you want and work through it with others. That'd be a great place to talk through those. Okay, great. I'll probably do that then. Fantastic, Dom. Any other questions for today? Um, let me see. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, for the most part, no, other than um, the whole anxiety thing, um, which, I mean, meditation works, but is there anything else that you would recommend that, that helps in that regard? Well, I would also look at, when I look at the holistic elements towards getting a top score, they do relate to addressing stress and anxiety. So mindfulness and meditation is a, is a big one. I would also look at your sleep, your diet, exercise, and some socializing too. I know that especially with everything that's been going on the past year plus, it's been tough to get all those in check, yeah. but to the extent that you can refine those and improve them, they do make a difference and they help with the stress and anxiety as well. So I would just look at what's going on with each of those and see if there's anything okay. habits that you may have gotten away from during this period that you could bring back into the mix or anything that you could look to improve. It will help. And also even just going to class and talking with other students in the study groups, especially it can help you recognize that, Hey, like, yes, the LSAT's important and the stress associated with it is understandable, but it's also not unique to you. This is something that so many other students deal with. And I'm in a unique position to talk with a large cross-section of students who are all going through the same thing. And the funny thing is that they all kind of feel like they're alone in it when they're not. And so one of the cool things about the live class sessions in the study groups that you'll see like, hey, yes, like, you know, in a way it can uh, validate your feelings around it, but it can also help you recognize that, hey, like you're not the only one dealing with this. And it can help you recognize like, hey, if you can help someone else with it by talking through it, that will also help you at the same time. Nice. All right. Well, well, thank you very much. It's, it's been a, a, a great input, great advice. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Keep at it. And if you need anything going forward, just reach out. I'm happy to help. Okay. Thank you very much. Of course. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.